Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And today I've got a full tank review for you of the first ever Tier 9 premium light tank in the game. It is the Char 75. This vehicle is fast, furious, with a travel mode a lot like a CS 63 that has a six round autoloader that it fires in two sets of three bursts, which in theory you can't stop firing when you've committed. That arguably makes this one of the most dangerous bursty tanks in the game, which has an incredibly high skill ceiling, and this enigma is incredibly confusing to play. Today, I'm going to break down what I've learned in my first 50 or so battles in this vehicle to try and let you know what the Char 75 is all about and how to at least play it reasonably well, as this one took a lot to figure out. So before I start my review today, I want to show you exactly what the Char 75 looks like when it's firing, because it's so hard to be able to explain. We're gonna fire two sets of three rounds of ammunition at the back of this 283. One, two, three, and then we have a three and a half second intra clip reload, and then one, two, three once again. So you can deliver six shells with 200 alpha damage. But what's interesting about this mechanic is that once you've started, you can't stop firing. However, yesterday on my BZ176 review, Storm brought to my attention that you can actually use the travel mode on this vehicle to interrupt the burst firing. But it's currently, I, I believe, unintended and a huge bug with this tank. Let me give you an example of this. We're going to fire at a Leopard prototype, but as we can see in a second, the Leopard prototype only has a small number of hit points and I don't want to waste all three rounds. And so I'm going to fire one, and then I'm going to enter the travel mode. And now look, down here, we've actually got five rounds of ammunition, and even though it sounded like I fired three shells, only one went towards the target, and I've still got five rounds left in this awkward six round magazine that I'm only meant to be able to fire three rounds in two sets of bursts, but you're tricking the game into interrupting that, that forced three round burst by entering the travel mode. Now, just to show you how scuffed this is, I'm gonna play it in half speed, so keep that in mind. I'm gonna show you what it looked like when we were firing at that leopard there when I only fired one shell. And keep in mind that you're going to see three sets of muzzle flashes, but look for the actual shells. Here we go in half speed. One shell, enter the travel mode. The two shells look like the animation is happening because the game thinks that's what you're meant to do, but actually only one shell went towards the target. Subsequently then, we fire three to try and finish off the Char MLE 75, unfortunately all shells missing, and now we fired one, then we fired three, and now we should have two shells left. But you're not meant to be able to do this in this vehicle. This is clearly a bug and unintended by Wargaming. And so, why I want to highlight this, and here's, here comes the uh, the two shells that was left over from the six after we fired one, then three, and then we should fire two now. And it actually works now. It, it, it shows the two shells being fired, and so that adds up to the six. So, the reason why I wanted to highlight this is because I don't think this is intended. I believe that Wargaming will have to patch this out. And while I'm sure that the incredibly skilled players of you out there will be able to use this to advantage, it's a tricky thing and it's unintended. And I'm going to now subsequently review this vehicle as if it's an unintended bug that will be patched out in the future. But while this remains, if you're a good player, you can enter the speed mode to interrupt your burst and that has dramatic changes for the vehicle as it has very limited amounts of ammunition. So the first thing to mention about the Char 75 is it's quite hard to find vehicles to compare this to because it's a very complicated tank. The vehicle has two different speed modes. You have your regular speed mode where you go 55 forwards and 20 backwards with a 28.72 power to weight ratio. And if you enter the travel mode of the vehicle, now your top speed increases to 75, your reverse speed to 30, your power to weight now up to 42. But there are some very substantial downsides to this. Firstly, your turret reverse goes from 65 degrees down to 20 degrees. Your view range goes from 370 down to 350. You lose a quarter of your camo rating inside this game mode, going from 100% down to 75% of your total possible camo. 
your aim time on this vehicle increases from 2.8 up to 3.5, your turret traverse goes up by 9 times to a horrendous state, and your bloom after firing goes from 2, which is amazing, up to 8, which is horrendous for this tank. Clearly, Wargaming don't want you to scout, and they don't want you to be able to fire when you're using the travel mode of this vehicle, a bit like the CS-63. And so keep all of this in mind where I try to compare the Char 75 to the AMX 1390. So right off the bat, when a tank has such a confusing shooting mode like the Char 75, Tanks GG can't estimate its damage per minute, thinking that this vehicle has 1,200 DPM. Whereas, in actuality, it takes about one second to fire off three rounds, then you have a three and a half second intraclip reload, up to four and a half seconds for the mag, and then it takes another one second to fire off those three rounds. So it's five and a half seconds to fire off both of your magazines, and then you're also going to have a 42 second reload to be able to go again, meaning that it takes from fully needing to reload in this tank, 47 and a half seconds to be able to dump out a full magazine. In turn, this means that if we take 60 and we divide it by 47.5, that means that we're firing off the equivalent of 1.26 magazines per minute, and considering that we can do 1,200 damage per magazine, this means that this vehicle's effective DPM in a real sense is actually 1,515 and not the horrendous 1,200 that Tanks GG is currently estimating. And also keep in mind with that number, five and a half, because that's how long it takes you to fire off an entire magazine with this vehicle. So the Char 75 has a 100 millimeter caliber gun. However, this 100 millimeter caliber gun, while it's large, Larger than the gun on the Amex 1390 actually has way less alpha damage. It has 200 alpha damage instead of 240 that we would get, but considering that you can deliver six shells in this magazine, the 1200 total damage is very impressive indeed, albeit over five and a half seconds. This is undoubtedly better than the 960 damage than the 1390 deals over its 6.62 seconds. As 1,205 and a half is way better than 960 and 6.6. Where things get a little bit screwy, however, is you can't choose the different vehicles that you unload this on, unless you drag the mouse while you're firing out the three round bursts across multiple targets, you kind of have to deal it to either only one tank or at most two tanks. Whereas the 3090 in theory could come in and be able to react to a fire, react to an ammo rack, or be able to just finish off four low health tanks. So that definitely means that the gun on the Char 75 feels really awkward and it's it's going to take some getting used to. The penetration on this tank as well is truly lackluster at 200. If you load the gold, it does go up to 240, but it just feels as if ah, you're having to fire a lot of those gold rounds. And also considering that once you pop, you can't stop for those three rounds, it's incredibly frustrating when you run out of ammunition in a battle and then you're finding that you're having to fire out 4,400 credits times by three? That's 13,200 credits that either you might all bounce or just needed only one shot to be able to finish off that low health tank. It is an incredibly frustrating and expensive tank to play with regards to that. More so, this vehicle carries an incredibly limited amount of ammunition, only 42 shells, which is 8,400 potential damage. And considering that you're having to waste so many of those shells in that bursty format, unless you use the bug, which I highlighted at the start of the video, and we don't know how long that's going to last, I've never had so many ammo problems on any tank in World of Tanks as I have on the Char 75. So with regards to the gun handling on this tank, 2.8 seconds, it's not good, it's not bad. 0.38 accuracy, again, not good, not bad. The gun handling, however, on the turret traverse is really good, but when you're moving, it's not so good. Accordingly, vertical stabilizers, not so useful on this vehicle, but I would still use them because you have to try and stop the bloom after firing. And while the bloom after firing is an excellent two, and that might sound like a random number, bloom after firing isn't something we often talk about on a tank. On this vehicle, it is possibly the most important stat. And remember that vertical stabilizers will actually reduce this number. And accordingly, 
Vert stabs on this vehicle is one of the most important modules if you want to be doing substantial amounts of damage, especially if you want to snipe. Otherwise, you're going to find those three shells after the first shot blooms out and just randomly goes at the target. And considering the poor penetration and limited ammo that this thing has, I'd say vert stabs are probably one of the most sane things that you could take on this tank, at least with regards to reducing the frustration that I've had with this vehicle. So the gun depression on this vehicle, 8 degrees, is absolutely lovely. And that really does make this feel like a flexible autoloader with the same amount of gun depression that you'd be accustomed to with the TVP T50-51. And it's just lovely. It's one of the reasons why I love the uh, Char Future 4 is because it has 7.5 degrees of gun depression. The fact that this one takes it just a little bit higher does make it feel very comfortable. So talking about the mobility of this vehicle, it's, again, tough to compare because, as I said, it has two modes of travel. It's either going to be slower or faster than the 1390 with a worse or a better power-to-weight ratio. But one thing that is truly staggering on this vehicle is the traverse speed. The base turret traverse speed is 65 degrees and the tank traverse is 60, making this an incredibly agile tank that behaves more like a wheeled vehicle in all fairness. Now onto the armor of this tank, 60 at the front of the turret, 40 at the side, and 50 on the front of the hull and 30 at the side, it means that this thing can actually pull off some ricochets against tanks that don't have 120mm caliber guns. And one of the bizarre things about this vehicle as well is it actually has 140mm of armor right on the corners. And while this isn't really going to come into play much, don't think you can get away with firing high explosive rounds willy-nilly at the front of a Char 75. The turret, however, is horrendous. 30 millimeters all round, easily overmatchable, and high explosive rounds will wreck it. But it's quite a small turret, isn't it? Hard thing to be able to hit, especially if this thing ends up going sideways and ends up going kind of backwards and forwards against you over a ridge line. It's a tricky tank to be able to engage that way. Furthermore, the 60 millimeters of armor that this vehicle has means that if you use your 8 degrees of gun depression that you're actually now auto ricocheting all uh, 120 millimeter caliber guns that aren't firing heat at you. And from that perspective, it's pretty wild what kind of luck you can get with this tank. However, even though this is quite a large light tank, and it does end up being one of the heaviest light tanks in the game, matching the WZ-1321, because of that, don't be afraid to ram other light tanks. For some reason, this doesn't translate into the hit points of the vehicle, which are a lowly 1,150 with less durability than the 1390. Just wish this was a little bit higher on this tank. Another thing that I must mention is that with the low engine health and the high chance to be set on fire, uh, with I think a 20% chance for your engine to be set on fire, I am burning in this tank so much more than other light tanks. With the Amex 1390 only having a 12% chance to be set on fire. Accordingly, it's going to be up to you whether you want to use a fire extinguisher on this tank, although I think that most players are going to want to try and pump up the poor view range of this vehicle with a premium consumable because it's only a lowly 370. And the camera rating on this vehicle, it's not good. It's worse than the 1390. And as we can see here, the vehicle has one of the worst camera ratings of any of the tier 9 and tier 10 lights. Only barely better than the Chinese and uh, even the big ones like the Americans. Crew-wise, this vehicle's very simple. If you've got an AMX 13105 crew, it's going to work in this tank. Obviously, you want to get situational awareness, recon, pump up the camera rating with concealment because you want to do everything that you can to try and improve both this vehicle's bad view range and also its terrible camo. Equipment-wise, I recommend that you have two builds on this vehicle. One, full scouting. Go for a commander's vision system with coated optics and vents on this vehicle. And even when you set the vehicle up like that, it still doesn't get that much view range. Some of you may prefer to drop the vision system or the vents for an exhaust if you want to have the extra camo, so do so at your discretion. My second build that I will be using for this vehicle will be to drop the vision system for vert stabs. And that's for where I don't feel there are that many bushes or maybe it's not such an important scout map and I really want to be able to try and pump up the damage with this vehicle and to deliver the magazines as accurately as possible. Field mods wise on this vehicle, I recommend you take the valves tuning 100%. This vehicle has more than enough engine power and you'd be silly to not improve the top speed by two kilometers. Next, I'd personally recommend to take 
the uh, improved accuracy because you just have so limited ammunition. And honestly, you can reload, always reload for a little bit longer in this tank, and it's more important to get the magazine out accurately. This will only make a tiny, tiny margin as I dance around the screen to your overall damage per minute of 41, minus 41, but it will significantly improve your accuracy. Next, this one's a bit up in the air. You can either take the reverse speed, and I think it's rather nice because if you don't, then your reverse speed is actually will drop down to about 17, which is not very good for a, any vehicle, let alone a light tank, when you're outside of the turbo mode. However, considering what I said about this vehicle actually being quite good for ramming, if you're crazy, I guess you could end up lowering the reverse speed and actually making this vehicle able to take a little bit less ramming and if you were to do that i would ram any light tank in the game outside of an alf cladung's panzer panther and there'd actually be quite a few mediums i would also ram if you decided to take that field mod for everyone who's not going to be using bounty uh, equipment on this vehicle i thoroughly recommend you take the firepower slot and then you can either put your vents in that or your vert stabs depending on what kind of a build you're going for because i don't really think this thing needs any uh, a turbo or anything from the mobility outside of putting vents in there but you can put vents and everything and then for the final field mod this is a flex pick if you have a really good crew and you're going to be using a premium consumable on this vehicle i'd recommend you sacrifice view range to improve concealment however if you find that your view range is not getting up to about 460 meters you might want to even pump up the view range here but be warned the camera rating on this vehicle will get horrendous if you do that and with all that said and done let's quit the jibber jabber and jump into the battlefield all right, let's roll out and we're on Lakeville. And with a vehicle like this, I guess I could go and try and spot, sit in a bush down the seven line. Maybe I can try and rush the mid, but my Char Future 4 and my team said that they're actually going to try and spot the uh, J6 area. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and spot the valley and just look at this thing absolutely tearing its way into position with that top speed limit of 77 kilometers an hour. Now, hopefully I'm going to leave the uh, speed mode, which actually takes three seconds, which is weird because it takes one second to enter it, but three seconds to leave it. So take that into account. Now we're going to fully load about 40 seconds into the game, and we're going to deliver one set of three shells, 600 damage. And well, I guess we're going to deliver another set of three shells for another 600 damage. And from that perspective, this is possibly the most deadly light tank in the game. Only the AMX 13105 at tier 10 could possibly come close to that kind of destruction. That would be dealing 1,170 average damage, uh, and it will take uh, pretty much the same kind of time to fire it out. I believe that tank's got a 2.76 intraclip reload, three round burst, means that roughly about five and a half seconds to deliver the mag, whereas this thing is delivering 1,200, again in about five and a half seconds. It's, it's obviously way better to have that damage at tier 9 than it is to have it at tier 10, as that makes this thing truly terrifying, an absolutely terrifying prospect. It's kind of funny, though, because you can kind of just relax in between the mags as well. This is quite a good vehicle for just racing into position, dumping out a minute mag, and then going AFK for 30 seconds. However, in this situation, look at this push. All my friends are going in. We've got the rocket boost there on the BZ-176. I'm going to try and flank around here. And there aren't many faster tanks in the game than this one. One of the fastest light tanks that you'll ever play. Um, only really it's something like a Rheimatar Panzerbug, and I believe it's starting to cut close to this kind of vehicle. Or is it a Panzer 1C at Tier 3? This thing is outrageously quick. And it's very easy to forget about that. Although a CS-63 is still going to be fairly comparable if using a turbo. And this, how, how good is this for a moment? This is the most dangerous bursty tank, a Cobra. Just getting bursted by the new most dangerous light tank. Just like that, 1,000 damage dealt to the Cobra. Get wrecked, mate. Um, although, I have to admit, in my play session in this vehicle, there were quite a few Cobras that wrecked me as well. I think there were a lot of people taking Cobras out onto the battlefield, probably because it's that season where soon your, your tokens from the battle pass are going to disappear, and so lots of people wanting to play them. But I also wonder whether there were some people who quite cleverly were taking Cobras out onto the battlefield because this thing is a big old easy tank to hit and those awesome Hesh rounds on the Cobra will do nasty things. So let me talk about ammunition on this vehicle. I have two builds. I have one build which is two clips of AP 
uh, four clips of APCR and one clip of HE. Now, whether or not you should take the HE on this tank, I don't think you should. I, I wanted to pull off like a miracle burst with this tank and in about 50 battles, I only found maybe one or two instances and one of them was here when the HE mag was even remotely useful. And here we go, HE time baby. And that was, I think that was 746 damage. Well, obviously I can tell it's right there. With, I'm not sure if I hit two or three of those shells, I couldn't even really tell. All I know is it got the job done. Maybe I hit all three, maybe I only hit two, but with 370 average damage on those shells of 53 millimeters of pen, we certainly ranked that ELC even 90. And just like that, in the first four minutes of this battle, we're up to a very healthy damage total for a tier nine light tank. And when you get going in this tank, this tank definitely gets going. Long story short, with regards to the HE rounds on this vehicle, however, I would totally not recommend. It sucks to have to fire like 14,000 credits there in this vehicle. I would totally recommend not taking a high explosive mag on this vehicle because the ammo is just so limited. I was having to fire gold at the end of the game there when I didn't want to. And that's probably because uh, I have that HE mag. If I had that extra mag of AP, I could have just used that instead. And no matter how cool it might be to go in and be able to do 2000 damage in a magazine with your HE rounds on this tank, with the way that it stands in its limited ammo loadout, I just don't think it's the right play to hold on to that for that one in 50 games where it actually might be useful. Next, we're rolling out on Ensk, and on a close quarters combat map like this, I've dropped my commander's vision system to be instead using vertical stabilizers. Bad driving there by me. When I'm playing the fastest light tank, I, I should be able to uh, perceive where a heavy tank is going to drive and drive around them and avoid uh, that defender. Not his fault there that he drove in front of me. I've got more than enough speed to be able to avoid them. All right, so Char 75, when you're playing on Ensk, what do you want to do? Well, I guess you want to go and try and take a look down the uh, east of this map. And I feel like I've made a misplay right at the beginning here because I've actually taken that HE mag. It keeps looking at me, haunting me. I think you'll 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 see how complicated this vehicle is. I mean, the ultimate dream, you can see I'm looking at that SU-130 PM thinking, oh, maybe I could deliver that HE mag into there. Uh, I don't know. A lot of people will probably only just take full gold on this vehicle. And those players will lose credits very rapidly playing a vehicle like this. So just bad marksmanship by me at the start of this game. I completely whiff a couple of mags. That was just poor. I only hit one out of six shells, so I've only done 200 damage. And now I'm faced with another 35 seconds to reload to think about my poor marksmanship. In this situation, it's it's kind of hard. What, what do you do? Do you just sit and snipe in this vehicle? Do you try and flank in this vehicle? I feel like it's primarily a damage dealer this tank. Luckily the LT432 doesn't get me and I realize, oh bro, yeah you really don't want to get caught by this thing if you're a light tank. Why? Just watch this. This is just, this is just disgustingly brutal. I'm not even sure if he can see me still. One, two, three, and he's on fire. Are we gonna let him burn? Yes we are. Are we gonna try and fire the shells at the char instead? Standard B is gonna pick up my kill I guess. Yeah of course the standard B is gonna pick up the kill. One thing I'd like to highlight about this tank is that I thoroughly recommend you get Deadeye on your gunner. Deadeye increases the chance for crits by 3%. Uh, and that's like a flat 3% increase rather than like a relative 3% increase. And so let's say you've got a 15% chance of damaging an engine. It'll now be an 18% chance of damaging an engine, which is, which is very significant. And the reason for that is I picked up more module damage in this vehicle than I think I, I, I have done. So one of the things that you've got to do in this tank is use the speed to your advantage. I, I just see an opportunity to drive through. And when you're so fast, you can make the map very small. So why would I sit there and just fight, fight those kind of tanks? Instead, why don't I just cut right through the enemy lines and see if I can sneak up behind the Carnarvon? That's exactly what I've done here. And then hopefully that will allow me to pull off a kill against the Carnarvon. Again, have to waste two shells uh, and two APCR shells. That 68 damage cost me, uh, what was it, 13,000 credits. Now I'm going to say that I'm going to help this defender and, oh baby. Oh, I have to admit, when you're unloading like that, this vehicle is pretty sassy. One thing I'd like to highlight is that 
As you can see, I, I never managed to do Object 279E Mission Coalition 4 with Honours, but this tank actually kind of makes it very easy to do. And so if you try hard, I can very much imagine that you can do crit missions with this vehicle easily, as it looks like I've been averaging about three crits per game while I've been playing this tank, and that is internal modules and crew members. Obviously, if you penetrate a lot of shells, that's just what happens. What do I want to do here? Oh, how about I just reverse out the way of the... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I told you yesterday in my review that there was a lot of stupidity, and there totally was. Well, good try, BZ176. Uh, funnily enough, I believe the guy was actually a very decent player. I think I've stopped because I'm laughing so much to try and catch my breath at the fact that, uh, I think, what was the, uh, the BZ's name? They were called Jesus Heat Us. Well, uh, hopefully, um, Jesus isn't hating us. After that shutdown on them there, that was, that was cold-hearted. That's one of the reasons why you should probably take the reverse speed on this vehicle. Just because otherwise the, the, the reverse speed outside of the turbo mode is, is pretty poor. A lot like on a, on a CS63, for example. Uh, but I definitely don't want to use a turbo on this vehicle like I would do on a CS63. So the Vipera finishes off the G-Saw. I'm going to try and race my way into position with some kind of new space protection on the back of this vehicle. I'm going to leave the speed mode so I don't have bad bloom after firing. And you notice with vert stabs that even though this thing's firing three shells, it just seems to connect. Unfortunately, I missed the kill shot there on the Object 704, which was a little bit sad. But um, considering that I'm raising my gun, I don't think I'm going to wait 30 seconds for the reload. I'm not sure this is the best trade. What the? Oh my. I'm looking at the ground like I want to blame the ground. And yes, I am actually going to blame the ground, boys and girls. Okay, so look. What I tried to do in that engagement was to make a micro turn so that I rammed with my tracks instead of my hull. Because if you ram with your tracks instead of your hull, they absorb the damage and you take less damage. But because of this little slope that we saw here, I actually was going so quick that I lost traction and my vehicle overturned, even though I just dabbed my achy like, ip, ip, that's what I did. This traverse speed on this tank is so outrageous that the possibility for failing while driving is pretty substantial. A lot like on an EBR. It takes a lot of getting used to. And I'm not sure whether it was a good save for my... Definitely a good save for my hit points, not really for my dignity here. And that would have probably put me over a possible ace tanker, which I haven't managed to get on this vehicle. Next, I want to show you a short game about how scary this tank is when it's on the enemy team and when, while you're hopefully not on your desktop and looking at the enemy's team list at the start of the battle, you should definitely keep one out for these vehicles because the potential of them delivering a 1,200 damage magazine to you if they catch you out of position is truly terrifying. They're kind of EBR quick, but they're EBR quick with the opportunity to do three times the damage that an EBR can deal to you at tier 9. So we're going to make our way up here. We're going to advance into position. We're going to leave the speed mode because I want to have the better gun handling. And then we're going to come up over the slope and we're going to go, oh, hi, enemy team. 5100, not prepared. One, two, three. They're on fire. They've used an automatic fire extinguisher, minus 10,000 credits. Then we hit them again. We lock them in place. We have a look behind us. And unfortunately for the Amex 5100, he's going to get finished off. Yes, that was a huge credit loss for him. If you're also taking into account that automatic fire extinguisher would have cost him 10,000 credits. It's what this thing is capable of. You've been warned with them on the battlefield. You have to look at them as a new predator, a new threat for an early position tank that will have a lot of damage against you. And if you're in a tier seven light tank, this thing's gonna get you. If you're in a tier eight light tank, as we saw with that LT432, this thing's gonna get you. Of course, as long as it doesn't mess up its mag. Because if it mess up it if it messes up its mag, it's gonna then have a 35 second reload where you're going to be able to take advantage of it. But be warned, these things are a big threat. And so be afraid of them if you do see them on the enemy team and consider either ways out if they do take those stereotypical positions. And also for all of you who are probably watching this video thinking, how do I play my Char 75? You're gonna have to learn starting positions for this tank. Contest them dump the mag, and then possibly get out 
if you think that it's going to be too risky to hold. All right, so we're rolling out on cliff. And obviously, where do I want to go on cliff? Well, it's staring you right in the face like some beacon leading up to our possible greatest game in the Char 75. And look at me getting up this slope as quickly as an EBR 90 is. Not quite as quickly, but, but nearly as quickly. And the speed of this vehicle should not be underestimated. Just like you saw with uh, wrecking that AMX 5100. This thing is going to be able to get into those early positions. But it's definitely not going to have the camera rating to get there unspotted, that's for certain. So I'm going to go and try and like wedge my vehicle up here along. But I, I drive badly and I get caught. That's a big misplay. And then, oh dear, uh, the T-49 nearly got me. But luckily we used some evasive maneuvers. The enemy Char Future, uh, sorry, Char MLE 75 actually gets caught there. And now I'm turning my turret and this, I'm making misplays in this game. You notice how I didn't leave the speed mode and then I did leave the speed mode. But you'll notice that when you're inside the speed mode, the turret traverse on this vehicle is horrendous. So big misplays by me. And then the T-49 even hits me. Awful start for me. This is just horrible play. Horrible play. And the BZ-176 is telling me to stop my advance. And I fully agree with him. However, luckily for me, the enemy Char 75 plays even worse and gets caught. Okay, let's see if we can sneak up here now. And you'll see that I wedge my way across the side, which makes me a much smaller target. And we don't mess it up this time. All right, so if we could just forget, like, the first minute of this gameplay, uh, you didn't all see that, right? I should really edit it out in the editing process and make myself appear, like, more consistent than I actually am. All right, so we've had a bad start with regards to that. But what can we do afterwards? Well, here's an LTTB. The LTTB's got two marks of excellence, but unfortunately for him, he has a very dangerous light tank above him that he just gets clipped out by. And that's just brutal. Absolutely brutal. 800 damage. Over 800 damage dealt there to that LTTB with all of those penetrating shots. This thing is terrifying with regards to delivering that 1,200 damage burst. And again, as I said, if you have vertical stabilizers on this vehicle and you improve the accuracy with the field mod, you can even take vents on the vehicle, which is further going to improve the accuracy by another 3%, then the gun starts to get really nutty on this vehicle. So if any of you just got it outside of a loot box and you're kind of playing it around and thinking, is this tank any good? It's the kind of tank that scales very well. If you don't have a good crew, if you don't have brothers in arms, if you don't use a premium consumable, if you don't have all of the field mods, if you're not using the correct equipment, or at least equipment that helps with whatever you want to make better about the vehicle, and you're not using it in the right slots, because you, I guess you don't have a firepower slot, or that you, uh, you're you not focusing on, on improving those aspects of the tank, it's going to be really brutal for you. But it does get better, it gets substantially better. Another thing I'd like to highlight about this vehicle is that it did take me a lot longer than most of the other vehicles that I've ever played in World of Tanks to start to get used to it. It's a very tricky tank. Um, you have to get you have to get a feel for the shells when you fire them out here. You have to get a feel for the travel mode. You have to get a feel for thinking about shall I deliver that mag? Shall I wait? And right now, I'm not guaranteed to penetrate this Iron Arnie. Um, so I'm going to wait for the perfect moment to burst my shells in because that's how important they are. This is a close game. We're down by 2,000 hit points in a couple of tanks. And I only have now 21 premium shells that are each costing me, what was it, 4,000 credits a pop here? But oh my word, when you hit them, oh, I, I, oh, it's just, oh, it just feels right, you know, when you're hitting those shells. Like 646 damage to the side of the Amex M451, who probably thought, ah, this game is won. Look, we're up by three tanks, we're up by a few thousand hit points, let's just go in. But um, yeah, they didn't think about possibly one of the most dangerous light tanks in the game sitting up on the hill, uh, ready to be able to deliver two sets of three round justice. Now, one thing I'd like to highlight about this uh, is that all of the gameplay that you're going to see today is from before that I knew about the bug that I highlighted. And while I don't want this tank review to be about the bug, oh, lovely mag there. And that's something you're just gonna have to learn is pulling back on the mouse while your gun is firing to deliver those shells. I didn't realize that the pillar was actually going to absorb a shell there, and so I just fired a quarter of my remaining shells in the tank, of which I've only got two mags of APCR now, and then I've got to deal with an HE mag. Uh, it's starting to get really awkward. But I want to highlight again is that all of the actual gameplay that you're going to see in the video today is before I knew about the bug 
of entering the speed mode to fire. So in this situation, um, I only need to fire one against the Centurion. And I would have loved to have known in this game that I could use a bug to effectively just fire one shell, enter the speed mode, and then save the subsequent shells for the remaining tanks. But, again, I've got a funny feeling that it truly is a bug. And I think that Wargaming will have to fix it, because I don't think that it's an in intended in any way. Whoa, that was dangerous. Imagine if I hadn't high-rolled one of those shells and I hadn't been able to finish off the EBR. Would I have to have fired off another mag at him? Nevertheless, he's down. Then I decide to go for the Centurion there. And I would have loved to have been able to react to, after seeing the frag, to be able to just enter that speed mode and save one of those APCR shells. Because you can see that I'm looking visibly nervous. Well, you, you can't see, because you can't see my live reaction. You would have had to watch on Twitch to see that. But you can tell just by my sitting there, it's kind of like that I'm trying to devote all of my attention to how am I going to manage to get through this now with only six shells and I can only click my mouse twice with regards to APCR to be able to deliver them. Am I going to try and ask my opponents to like align up side by side and then I just burst like some kind of like machine gun spray across? Bit weird. And again, if, I, if I'd known about the bug, then I would have been able to deliver those mags a lot more uh, cleanly by just firing as many shells as I need, which is absolutely game breaking with regards to this tank. All right, so I'm not going to uh, enter the speed mode here to travel. I'm just looking at this char, and ah, oh, look, look, I can't actually pen his upper hull, so I'd have to hit his turret here. So I'm just waiting, and oh no, we only hit one out of three. Disastrous struck. I've only got three APCR shells left. I was really hoping that that would have bursted in, and it shows you that even with vertical stabilizers. You can't deliver the magazine accurately at decent distances. So what you really want to do is wait until you've got the side of a tank or you're shooting weakly armored tanks. So be warned. It's all about waiting and positioning yourself and making sure that you're waiting for that, that kill. And right now, oh, it, I don't want to fire three unless I know that I'm going to pen at least two on the char in this scenario. And I would have loved to have known at the time that I could fire one, enter the speed mode. But keep it, but keep in mind that if you do that, then you're going to have to uh, wait a whole second station because your tank is immobile. But usually a second isn't such a big deal. And if you want to do the, should we say, magazine interrupting bug before Wargaming fix it, then you want to make sure that you are in the shooting mode. Because then you'll fire, use the one second switch, and then hopefully you can either pull back or go forwards to be able to get out of harm's way. So in this situation, I'm kind of waiting for the Object 283 to be able to flank around. And hopefully the Progetto 46 as well. This game is darn close. We're up to five francs this game, and I'm hoping I'm going to be able to get a top gun. But you notice how limited the ammunition is. This vehicle is meant to have a potential damage of 8,400. But if you only hit half your shells because you want to try and engage at decent distances and of those shells not all of them penetrate and then maybe you get like a, a high roll so you actually end up firing rounds unnecessarily in the magazine which can be very frustrating when they cost so much oh i really find it hard to explain to you all how up and down this tank is it's like an emotional roller coaster in some ways it feels like one of the most fun tanks i've ever played and in other ways it feels like one of the most frustrating tanks i've ever played i think it's its large size in this scenario and poor camera rating that does make it feel incredibly awkward but also its speed and its gun makes it feel so incredibly fun at the same si uh, the same situation so, unfortunately, because I fired half my mag, I'm not able to intuition switch to HE, because I probably should. I feel like the HE shells, if I fire three of them, might be able to shut down the Char Future 4 here. And then, because I know that those HE shells, that full mag of HE, are going to be completely useless against the BZ-176. Alright, so Char Future 4, am I going to go for his lower plate here? That looks like such a good opportunity. You'll see that I press my R key once to just slowly come forwards. Oh, come on, it looks so good. I gotta take that, right? I gotta take that. Well, that's it. No more APCR rounds for me. I'm down to my HE mag only as my Centurion 7-1 goes around the corner. They're gonna get absolutely smashed. 
Looks like that's a Char Future 4 followed up by an, either an AP or a HE round from the BZ176. But my Progetto quite rightly now knows that the BZ176 is reloading for 20 seconds. The Char is minus two. The Char has two more shells. I can only take a shell from him six times out of ten. And I really want to see the Char fire again before I feel like I'm going to commit. It looks like the Char actually might be reloading as they're not firing anymore. Which is a little bit bizarre. And so I've got to take my guess that they are reloading. Alright, HE time. And the HE shell actually does 107 to the back of the Char. But now I'm in a real awkward situation. When my object 283 is capping, he's telling me to fall back from there. Okay, mate, don't worry, I got this. Uh, and I've now got one HE mag versus a BZ-176. What do I do? Well, what do you do when you run out of ammunition in a vehicle? I fired pretty much all of it and one clip of a magazine ammo that's never going to be able to take this vehicle out unless I manage to set him on fire or something or I ammo rack him with HE, which I don't think that's really going to happen all that often. I, th I don't think you can even damage ammo racks with HE. I think you can definitely set tanks on fire with HE though. Um, so what I'm going to do is just do what I think my best bet is, and that is to just avoid this BZ-176, distract them, make them think I'm a threat so that they don't go over and spot the 283 on my team, who only has uh, like uh, 200, sorry, 327 hit points, and just win the game like this. I am going to take a chance at the end though, don't worry. Um, as soon as I see that there's no opportunity for him to interrupt the cap anymore, uh, and as, as long as my teammate actually fully caps, I know I've got 5 seconds, 4 seconds, 3 seconds. I did 20 extra damage. I did 20 extra damage. I thought maybe all of the damage would help to try and get the ace tanker. But unfortunately, it wasn't to be. Even though I made 300,000 credits, although keep in mind that's because currently there's 50% extra credits for playing vehicles and I'm using a 50% credit booster, it wasn't an ace tanker. This was 1,230 base, nearly 4,000 damage dealt, and we got a top gun. But I'd also like to clarify, I spent 118,000 credits on ammunition! And this is because you can't interrupt that magazine. And because you've got such a limited amount of ammo, when you get against those tier 9 and tier 10 tanks, do you really want to be firing 200 millimeters of penetration instead of 240? Yeah, probably not. And while I'm not going to notice this when the Christmas event is going on and everything's just so outrageous, I am definitely going to notice this when I no longer have a stock of premium consumables and Christmas is gone. And I think... This is something that's really important to highlight about the vehicle, is that economically, I think this will probably be one of the most brutal tanks to play, if purely because of wasted ammunition. So all in all, the Char 75, is it a good tank? Yes, it is a good tank. Is it a completely broken tank? Situationally, yes. Although I don't think that this thing is going to be absolutely insane at tier 9. I think there's enough things to hate about this vehicle with its large size, easy to hit outside of the speed mode, and when it is in the speed mode, it's easy to spot, and it can't really spot you very effectively. I must mention how frustrating this tank is to play with regards to the limited ammo loadout and not ever feeling that you have the right tools for the end of the battle. And I think this will break some players, and I think because of that, it also has an incredibly high skill cap. It's tricky to be able to give lead to a target while you're unloading the magazine, while it's moving. It's hard to be able to make the correct decision, to be able to balance in. Do you need to be in the speed mode? Do you need to be outside the speed mode? And considering the breaking bug that uh, the community has discovered with regards to interrupting your magazine, which I don't know how Wargaming are going to... Uh, uh, address. But even using that, again, adds another level to the skill ceiling on this tank. I think these vehicles will be played absolutely horrendously by some players and they will be an absolute devil on the battlefield for others. With regards to competitive tier 9 premium tanks inside the game, I don't think anybody's suggesting the WZ-114 or the Stritzvang K or the WZ-120 are outrageously good tanks or come close to their tech tree counterparts. And I think this one is the first one that is probably just as good, if not slightly better, in some regards, than other Tier 9 tanks. And because of that, this is a dangerous thing to have going into the game. Because remember, 
Wargaming can never nerf premium tanks. And tier 9 is kind of the last fortress of happiness for quite a lot of players who don't want to play tier 8 because they're constantly playing against OP premiums and they don't want to play tier 10 because you're only playing against tier 10 tanks and for some people that's quite boring. And so a vehicle like this and Wargaming's strategy of now arguably releasing premium tanks that are just as good as other tanks at tier 9 rather than being slightly worse as we've seen with arguably the Chieftain prototype, it sets a dangerous precedence for what might be happening in the future. And so my final opinion, this is a complicated tank to play that requires a very good crew and knowledge of the game. If you have those two things, you will shine in this vehicle. If you don't, you're probably just going to end up getting frustrated and getting yourself into harm's way. And if anyone from Wargaming is watching, I'd really like you to clarify whether interrupting your magazine is intended and how you will address this in the future. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that's it for today. Really hope you enjoyed this tank review. If you did and you thought it was useful, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And let me know what you think about this tank in the comments down below. Do you think it looks outrageously overpowered or do you think that it looks uh, about right and interesting? And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.